you need knowledge, you need information. The environment is changing very fast, uh, population is growing very fast, so you need somebody who is very articulate to be able to assist to bring agriculture as if it is a whole piece for the uh, utilization of the farm. So for Africa, agricultural extension, that is the delivery of knowledge, if I may put it that way, is very, very, very important. Most of African countries, obviously, governments have failed really to address the issue of training in agriculture. It is time to wake up and redress the situation because we know that Africa can make it. As population pressure has risen sharply, the low intensity, unimproved agriculture of the past has proved inadequate to meet food demands. There has been a widespread failure of agricultural development in sub Saharan Africa. When you talk about uh, developing agriculture, you are talking about taking to farmers all the existing uh, technologies. And extension worker is the one who is the bridge between the researcher and the farmers. But the fact of the matter is that they are not equipped with uh, requisite knowledge, skills. Here is the challenge. We have to upgrade the extension, especially the mid-career extension uh, workers. Agriculture is becoming more dynamic now. Farmers are asking more questions now. So we think uh, universities and research should also radicalize their own system. They have to look at their curriculum and revise them. We want action-oriented training now. We want action-oriented research now. So we think that the universities must follow what the farmer is doing in the field to be able to design requisite training. In Ghana, the Ministry of Food and Agriculture and the University of Cape Coast were partners in an innovative program to train future extension leaders and bring the university squarely into Ghana's agricultural development. The Sasakawa Africa Association and Winrock International provided funds and expertise to help initiate this new approach. We have one of the rarest chances to be able to train uh, our staff not, not too much from the orthodox way of doing things, but doing it another way, but achieving a very good uh, result. Let me just go back to the start point of this program. When we approached the university, it was, I mean, the question of rigor, the question of establishing a new practical program for them was a big issue. The question of academic rigor had loomed large in the early planning. The ministry needed a course to upgrade the skills of their experienced frontline staff, who traditionally were unlikely to get a university degree. A new approach was essential, with active participation from the agricultural community in curriculum design. But many universities resisted such an unconventional proposal, in the name of what they perceived to be academic rigor, or, as one wit suggested, their academic rigor mortis. Cape Coast, Ghana. It was here at the University of Cape Coast that this unconventional proposal found its first fertile ground, not least because of the educational philosophy of the Vice-Chancellor, Professor Samuel Ajipong. We talk about universities being instruments of change, but rarely do we go out and find what is happening in the community. Now, in the past, it was all right. I mean, you could, you could pursue uh, you know, uh, knowledge for its own sake. But for us in, in the developing countries, particularly in Africa, I do not think that we have that luxury. These extension workers are the first intake of students on the BSc course. All in mid-career with about 10 years practical field experience, they are amongst the best in Ghana. UCC was first set up after Ghana's independence as a center of academic excellence. Fired by the idealism of the times, six villages donated land for building the university. I went around the six villages and uh, discovered that in the 33 years of my existence here, only one 
one person from one of the villages has actually passed through the walls of the university. And that was rather disappointing. When Professor Adjipong arrived as vice chancellor, he was determined to maintain the excellence but change the emphasis. There should be a two-way interaction between the society and the university. It's good for the university and it's also good for the society. I have also heard and we know. Dr. Joe Kwating is a senior lecturer in agricultural science who is putting these ideas into practice. Uh, this morning, I'd like us to take a look at government policies in agriculture in the country. To attract the best candidates, the ministry gives them leave with full pay while they are on the course. In the past, bright extension officers have been sent abroad to get first and higher degrees. But this is extremely expensive, and often they don't come back afterwards because of low salaries at home. The end result is that uh, the whole Africa, the whole continent, is facing the problem of brain drain of well-qualified people, whereas we need them here in Africa to help in the development of this continent. Our philosophy is to keep people in Africa and give them the opportunity to have the same level of academic uh, training. What do you have to say about the fact that you haven't succeeded in taking technology to farmers? Policy is planned from the top and triggered down to the uh, farmer who is going to be the beneficiary. And I think, in my opinion, it should be from down to top. As part of the course's focus on field work, each student must choose a real project with farmers. They call these supervised enterprise projects, or SEPs. Naomi Adyapena has chosen to introduce pork smoking technology to pig farmers. I am Naomi Adyapena. I work with a Women in Agri Development Department under the Ministry of Agriculture. And I chose uh, pork mainly because I want to encourage intake of uh, animal protein. Farmers' initial reluctance to adopt new techniques is often overcome when they realize how much more money they can make. Normally you sell it, the fresh meat. Yeah, yeah, that's how we do it. So we want to see if we can smoke it, present it in that form. And in that form, maybe the price will be better. I will teach you how we should go about it. I settled on smoking because uh, that has been our culture in the villages. Smoking has been the method that we use to preserve our meat and fish. She taught the use of preservatives in preparation for smoking the meat. And she took them to the university's own pork smoker on campus. They immediately pointed out all sorts of design faults. And when they built their own smoker, they incorporated a lot of their own improvements. Instead of the fire being at the front, where they would burn their legs, they put it at the side, and they used gas instead of wood as a fuel. They also included more bars for hanging the meat, and they made the door bigger. Altogether, a major improvement on the oven designed by the university lecturers. Do we all see the way she has constantly used a participatory approach at every stage of the, of the process? The farmer, per se, has also got something that we have to tap and use. We shouldn't always depend on uh, what scientific ideas and leave the farmer out. When they bring out their own ideas, they actually adapt whatever new technology we introduce to them. What she's saying is very important that we should never underestimate what farmers know. After we've cured, put it in the oven, and it came out so beautifully. The color was so golden brown. We were all excited about it. Ooh, hello, Gary. Hello. Yeah, welcome. Hello, hello. thank you. How are you doing? It looks, looks, looks lovely. Yeah. Dr. Fred Adoy is Niemi Adyapenna's course supervisor. For Nyemi, it has been a long and, at times, difficult project. She's displayed a, a, a high sense of, of uh, how should I say, courage. She went into this thing, I, I should say, quite blind. She had no background in meat processing. 
she's kept coming back when she had problems to talk things over, go back and, and redesign things. And, and she, she went in with a will to succeed. I've been most impressed with her, her fighting attitude. It's their own animal yeah. and it's their, we are doing it on their farm. Yeah. And there's nothing new from anywhere. Whatever we use, they are doing themselves. And then we can also talk about, of course, money, of course. What, yes. what from that point of view, how, 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 how yes. has, it, has it made a big improvement yes. in, your, in your earnings? In fact, first we used to... And this call basically has challenged them by making them attempt to do things they had never tried their hands on before. It's not just the student, but we, the, the faculty staff, are, are also being, being challenged to reassess our, our, our ways of teaching and the, the sort of research we're trying to push on to people. All right, then. God bless. Bye bye. Okay. Uh, Thanks for coming. And you. <laughs> Another student on the BSc course, Isaac Ababi, comes from the Ministry of Food and Agriculture's Information Support Unit. For his supervised enterprise project, he wanted to persuade farmers to upgrade their storage, an urgent need in Ghana. Maize farmers lose a lot of the maize after harvest. So it is proper that a way is found to help them reduce loss. And this improved narrow uh, creep is one way of helping farmers to do that. So I decided to work on that. And how do I do it? I just want to prepare materials that the extension staff will use to teach farmers how to construct, use, and manage the creep. At the meeting, I introduced the technology to them and backed it with a poster. You see that there are differences in the price, for sure. Uh -huh. So that all we are trying to do is to reduce costs. We tell them about the importance of the creep, the usefulness of the creep. And based on that, the farmer is free to decide whether to do it or not. So the decision is solely his. And if you involve the farmers right from that point, I think that is the best way to do it. And he readily sees the use, the importance of such a creep, comparing it with what he was using. And the poster was so attractive to them that at the end of the meeting, I remember three people opted to construct one. One critical part of designing communications is to test the design in the field to check that it actually works as intended. When he did this with his first draft poster, he got a surprise. One important aspect of the creep is that it prevents rodents from entering. So when I designed the poster, I sort of put rats at a point where they cannot climb because we put rodent gas on it. But upon pre-testing the poster, we realized that farmers rather associate the rats with the creep. So based on this pre-testing, we would like to remove the rats entirely from the poster. It's sort of a uh, there is a general that statement that which is spoken does not mean heard, and heard does not mean understood. Through the course, I realized that yes. clearly that if you want to communicate a message, make sure that the message is understood. One of the problems they had in that department is that they really um, did not have the skills to put out training materials. So Isaac decided to take up a challenge. We thought this was a really laudable idea and uh, he had a lot of enthusiasm. So what we decided to do was to work with him and uh, just guide him. And uh, this worked out very well. Basically, the course has been very useful. Academically, it has been very hectic. And then uh, the field work, through the field work, you are exposed to real farm situation. And we've gained a lot out of that. Isaac also decided to make a video to show how the crib is constructed. Now, we have 32 seconds. Editing was a new experience for him, so he got help from video editor Seth Ashiyama. Materials that are used tend to page. He also produced a booklet which gives a blueprint for the design. 
The course content is so rich. I think I have improved a lot in the field of uh, communication, especially person to person. The basic philosophy of this course is to create a field staff or agricultural extension managerial staff who have the ability to analyze farmers' problems and find solutions to them. We think the supervised enterprise uh, program has been able to redo, if I may use this word, technically redo our personnel. Good, good. The person responsible for drawing together the practical and academic sides into a coherent and dynamic new course for the students was Dr. Moses Zina. They have realized that they have an inner energy that was dormant. I'm sure they believed it, but they doubted it because the system had shut the door. Now the door is open. They have developed so, so much confidence in themselves that can never be put off. They have strong communication skills. They have strong human relations skills. They have strong commitment to their work. And they have empathy for the people that they're trying to help. You see the confident level. You see what they have actually done in the field. And it, it gives you a sense of accomplishment, a sense of uh, success, a sense of satisfaction. I know they are going to, to change the whole system because I think they've acquired a the kind of education that will enable them to do just that. Ashokoko village in the Ashanti region of Ghana. Yaya Musa climbs a tree to harvest locust beans, known locally as Dawa Dawa. The trees grow wild. Every year there are fewer beans and the men have to go further to find any. In an area where Dawa Dawa has great economic significance, it is a disaster. The beans are processed into a fermented bean paste, which is also called dawa dawa. It is a basic food addition and flavoring. For the women, it is almost their sole source of income. As the beans have become scarcer, their lives have become considerably harder. Another supervised enterprise project aims to reverse this serious economic decline. The student involved is called Dorothy Effa. I decided to work with rural women because uh, here most of these are farmers are women, the processes are women, and in that society they bear most of the burden. Meanwhile, their incomes are very low. So I decided to teach these women how to process soya bean into dawa dawa as an income generating activity. The substitution of soya bean for the traditional dawa dawa is the critical change. First, she had to persuade the women to adopt the technology. So they came uh, to a meeting and uh, I introduced the project to them. Hey, my dear, my her tutor on the project was Dr. Edward Mutifosayo. Dorothy has been transformed from just a normal, typical student into a very self-confident uh, person who can work with people. Through this project, she's been able to know how much she can organize people, how much she can inspire people, how much she can facilitate group development, and uh, how much she can generally instill in people the ability to work for themselves and their own development. Show to them the soya bean and then tell them how it can be used to process dawa dawa. This BSC course has been very, very, very useful to me. Uh, it has helped me to improve my communication skills. I have learned that any technology should be uh, adapted to suit the system condition on the ground. It shouldn't be stereotyped. Oh, 
He organized a demonstration showing each stage of the process. One of the things I have learned myself is these things you don't teach them. But we didn't teach her. We just inspired in her to know how much capacity she has for herself. Because the various courses we gave them were just skills in knowing yourself, skills in tapping into your own creativity, skills in uh, asking questions, skills in thinking about alternatives. She had identified a real need and the women took up the technology with enthusiasm. It was a lifeline for their failing economy. Some time of the year they are out of business. Okay. Because uh, the locals bin will uh -huh. not be in season. Okay. That is okay. Why. But in terms of microorganism, I'm, I'm interested. I mean, is it the same process going on here? Or? Yes. Research has shown that the same microorganism that worked on the soya bean, uh -huh. that is a it's the same thing that works also on the Oh, so the process of fermentation and everything is almost the, the same. It's almost the same thing. I see. Uh -huh. The SEPS, the Supervised Enterprise Project Component, is the core, the central nerve of the project. Everything, every course, everything else we do is to help students shape that practical component for it to be effective and successful. But in terms of cost, can uh -huh. you tell us, I mean, is there any difference between how much it costs to produce this and how much it costs to produce from the locals bean? Yeah. It's Plus cheaper to make this? It's cheaper to make it. And even less, it's easier. Okay. The other one is very laborious. Okay. You have to boil it for 24 hours. Okay. This one, you boil it for only one and a half hours. And uh, presently, they are buying a bowl okay. of the locals bean for 2,000. And then the soya bean is 1,005. But are the women producing the soya bean themselves or they are buying on the market? They have their own farm, but okay. they buy to supplement. To supplement. Ah, yes. okay. Getting credit was a big problem. Since local moneylenders charge 100% interest, the banks had already turned them down for a loan, but Dorothy persuaded them that now they were a group, they could try again. This time, they got 100,000 sedis each, about $80. But have they been able to pay back the loan? Yes, uh -huh. they have paid the loan. Their the recovery is 100%. Oh. And it will interest you to know that uh -huh. the manager has increased the loan to 300,000 per, per, person. per person. So now they have a loan of 7.4 million. We always uh, talk about uh, agriculture in Africa as subsistence. And we, time is no more to stick to this kind of idea. The concept of enterprise is for the students, when they are real farmers, to make sure that farmers don't produce just for the sur uh, survival, but they produce because they have to make profit of it. Professor Ajipong came to see Dorothy Effer's progress. Hey, my mom watch you. I found her as a very relaxed student uh, when I came, and I also saw that she had uh, really established a, a very good relationship between herself and the, and the villagers. The black is the home. I'm here because uh, I feel really concerned that uh, we, we must really produce the change that is required in these rural areas. Um, the project itself is exciting, it's, it's interesting, it's relevant to the people. Ah. To soften it. Hey, my bro. Oh, they are saying that they are very tired. <laughs> How do they get the sand uh, out? Uh, out, that's what they are doing. Oh, okay, uh -huh. okay. This is one village. How do we get the good news to the other, the numerous other villages uh, who haven't heard about this? How do we do this? This is the sort of impact I would like to see. For me, this is only the beginning. This is only the beginning. When she first came to this village, there were evident signs of poverty and malnutrition. Her project has had a real economic impact. Just about nine months, one year now, there is a big difference. All the children in this village have wonderful signs of improvement in their health and growth. They are all happy, and many of the kids are now in school. I was really happy because I could see that it's progressing. And then even the condition in the village is changing. They are also happy, the women, and even their husbands too. The way they see me, the way they interact with me, shows that they are all happy about the project. 
The women of Ashikoku plant the next batch of soya beans. The role of women in agriculture has been a particular concern in the design of the BSc course. There is a fundamental problem which, as a nation, in Ghana and indeed in Africa, we have to resolve. Women education is very important. I think the fact of the matter, historically, our fathers in the past refused to get women trained because they thought that women will only go and marry men. Our commitment to women is absolute uh, because we know that um, in the farming sector, women are playing a very leading role. In fact, I would say that about 60-70% uh, of the farming enterprise is in the hands of women. Hello, madam. Oh, hi. <laughs> so you finished with the course? Yes. Have a seat. <laughs> Thank you. Niemi Adiapena came to discuss her future work with the Ministry's Acting Director of Women in Agricultural Development, Rosetta Tetebu, and her Ministry Supervisor, Juliana Dennis. There is something I would want to say in appreciation to what the Sasakawa Africa Association has done for the women farmers in this country. There is a commitment from the Sasakawa Africa Association as well as from the Ministry of Food and Agriculture to make sure that women benefit from the Sasakawa Safe Project at the University of Cape Coast. We have finally... Isaac Ababi discusses how his new skills will fit into the work of the Information Support Unit. And, the writing. Yeah. and this is the final uh, thing we have got. Uh -huh. So as it is, we hope it's going to serve the purpose. And Dorothy Effer returns to supervise extension work in her home district. First of all, I think the, the students who are enrolled in this program are really committed people. I'm really impressed with the quality of work that they have uh, accomplished. And my belief is that they are really going to be the leaders to lead the development of agriculture in Africa. Problems here are the same as they are in Ethiopia or Mozambique or in Benin or, or, or in Nigeria. This program, this type of program is not meant to remain in Ghana. Ghana is just a start point. To spread the idea across sub-Saharan Africa, Winrock International and the Sasakawa Africa Association are coordinating a fundraising campaign, the Partner Initiative, to help other universities to establish similar courses. Already the momentum is building as major universities in Ethiopia, Uganda and Tanzania have embraced this new approach. The Partner Initiative is an idea of trying to bring together several universities in Africa committed to training mid-level agricultural extension staff. So our aim is to share experiences among institutions committed to the same vision. And if we have several countries really in this partnership, I think over a generation we can really move a lot of things in sub-Saharan Africa. I believe that very strongly.